being recorded now. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Joe for giving me the opportunity to come back and to share my piece. And I wanted, by all means, if you guys are needing to... <laughs> okay, have a fantastic night. Good night. Good night. I don't know how appropriate. I always feel uncomfortable when it's when it's getting videoed then because it's just like, what if there isn't something that's, you know, what I don't want anybody to feel limited uh, to be able to respond, but I really wanted to give some hope as well in terms of creative opportunities. I do believe a workshop to understand what the common law truly is and understand that it's not hyphenated, it's not capitalized, it isn't limited, and it's not been written. And that's where our rights truly come from, rather than privileges and benefits that are afforded to our person or some other created status that is under the jurisdiction of the creator of the status. So these are things we can get into, and if anyone that came to the night at Vivian's we had back in February where I was reading some of the Justinian Connection report that I wrote, uh, that report was made available on my website as of March 1st, so if you want to see that, you can go to ljeh.ca, which are my four initials, .ca, and you can get that. It's right on the homepage. It's 39 pages, and it basically breaks down the imperfect us you frucked is a joke that I like to say that this whole thing has been frucking with us, because a usufruct is where there is usus fructus and debusus, which is how you can use someone else's property, which is why we get converted into our person for the corpse, corporate entity, to be able to use and abuse us through the fructus, which is the ability to profit off of someone else's property. And then abusus is where it becomes imperfect because then whoever claims it is able to then abuse it use it and profit off of it, which is why we're in the state that we are. You can't hold an entity liable unless it's able to lie and then sure, the corpse is doing it through us, which is why I say there is no us versus them. So when we really start to take our power back and we get back to that fact, we see the power of putting every man and woman on notice in their private capacity where their liability insurance no longer protects them because it is a man or a woman, first and foremost, that puts a suit on to convert us into something other than we originally were. If you know anything about English grammar, I have an English degree, so I have that advantage, but a prefix is actually a word that goes before what is fixed, which is the centerpiece of the word. And um, the word I was just breaking down that I lost my train of thought on was? What was the fructus thing? <laughs> the fructus. Um, no. I was going, I went, I went. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're following along and I appreciate that, Victor, thank you. Um, no, so it was, close, the, well, this is such a tight community and I'm so grateful that we have so many strong men and women that are part of this group because when we get back to how powerful we really are we stop feeling powerless because we put our energy into the entity that then consumes us because our identity comes from that which we entify so a prefix ID on identity you have an entity left over when the prefix of id is moved and then you have identify and entify means to actually make something a mental construct into something tangible so to entify something is to then give it credibility though it was only a construct in our heads such as religion and politics religion is the religioning of us based on our belief systems so you call the creator of all something other than I do so we're different we're in a different camp well, I'm sorry, but the all is the exclusion of none. So regardless of what box we put the creator of all into, if we actually get down to the basics, we find that there's more commonality and more common ground than there is differences. It's mental constructs that is the reason that the Mental Health Act is the modern day witch hunt legalized and normalized because it's the best way. If you can say that you are sane 
and someone else challenges you while they're wearing an umbrella or a suit of liability protection to say that they're not liable for what they said, then it's you against the entity. And it's the equivalent from the famous <coughs> book many are familiar with of David and Goliath. A man standing against an entity that is not as powerful as he is made to seem because of his sheer size, but the machine is only operated by us who are deemed to be cogs in a wheel which is not true. Each of us matter, and when we come together and we realize that everything we've been through leading up to this very moment prepared us for this very moment and what we choose to do moving forward from <coughs> here. This is what's called a descansos. That's the cross on the side of the road where a traumatic event took place and we notice because the cross marks the spot where someone's life changed forever. Well, within the court system, that cross is when the status gets changed and we become an offender or a criminal or we become something other than we originally were, which takes me back to the prefix I was originally going to mention, which was aboriginal. That status, from or away, is what ab means as a prefix. When ab is added to the original, it is from or away from what is original, which is why all of the agreements for the men and women that were originals in this place was changed from the name of the status that was actually promising things to those who qualified for the status, Indians, right? The Indian Act, all of those promises were made, but then it's a one-sided transfer so that the promises made to those who were labeled Indians and then converted into aboriginals or indigenous or all of the other ways that First Nations all of these names are simply ways that the promises made to all of those doesn't go over with the conversion. And that's the ultimate version of the con that we've been getting strung along with because we didn't know how to actually claim our rights and say that the benefits and privileges, liabilities, obligations, and duties are based on the status or the position that the man or woman takes on in order to act on behalf of the corpse, the entity that's causing us all harm, including those who are orating the rules on behalf of the corpse. So when we stop hating one another, we start to actually get back to the fact that karmically, we pay when we cause another harm or encourage the harming of another. So the desire to get justice that would be just as cold as ice against those men and women that have been causing harm because bullying has been a really good racket, racket, baritry, fraud. It's all there, and we've been given it the nod because that's just what you do in this world, except for that's not true. So there's a little lawful piece, which is what I delve into quite a lot. But the piece that I wanted to come here to share is twofold. It does involve lawful peace. And so basically what I'm working on right now, um, my boyfriend is up in Blackstock area and Ajax. So now I go there for a week at a time and I'm here and I'm in between. But when I am here, I would like to get an opportunity going at Vivian's, which we'll schedule and I can let everyone know about. But I think that doing some round table events would be really powerful. I'm doing it up in Blackstock. I've got workshops for the next four months, one day, and then the night before, I'm gonna host a round table meeting where we can come together and we can put the best of our traditions, our belief systems, the mystery schools, all of the ways that we think that we're talking about different things. We put it all on the table, and then we actually start to see the similarities between all of that which is on the table so that we stop letting ourselves be divided by fictitious ideations about what things mean and what things are. Because syntax, semantics, and semiotics are big <coughs> words that make it sound like I'm exclusive to something maybe you're not so well-versed in. But we only become well-versed when we speak the verse in the universe that we're all singing along to, collectively. So the lawful piece in the round tables is one piece that I think 
many here would benefit from being aware of or attending, and I don't have the details because I've been working on getting it scheduled up in Blackstock right now, but could be transferred over here. But what is available here also is Album 23, which is a music project that I'm helping to co-lead. And it's basically transforming the artist to change the energetic signature that is being put into the music. So you know the saying, hurting people hurt people and healed people heal people? Well, if we're looking at it from an artistic perspective, a healed artist, one who has done the inner work to be able to own and integrate and then embody a new energetic signature, we're able to actually then change the kind of music and the frequency of it that we're putting out. Because if we're hurting, we feel that. And that's why the heart is drawn by emotionality. But if we actually go to a level deeper and we do the inner work in good company, then we can shift on a far bigger scale and we do need very few of us to be able to do this. So album 23 is the third album project that I'll have collaborated with others to pull together during the pandemic because while the world was shut down and artists had their bread and butter and opportunity to find significance taken away, a friend had reached out who had followed my work and said, could you talk to some artists? Would you get them together? And it's like, oh my God, you're going to gather people and I just show up? Yes. So I showed up and it was amazing and I got challenged by a phenomenal artist. She's in her 20s. She's from the Canary Islands. Her name is Luna Keller. And she has a song on album 22, which was the first, called Prophecy, that I'd encourage all of you to check out. Because maybe you could relate that to what's being said now. But Luna basically was, I wanted to make sure everyone knew. Everyone knew what was going on. Right? And I say it kind of dramatically because we, I think we've all kind of been in that like making sure they know place. Mm -hmm. And it was so beautiful because in her very astute and fluid and lovely way, she helped me see I was selling fear in a different package. And it was like, whoa, I can grow in this room. And so... I said, can we do this again? So we did in two weeks. And then two weeks later, we did it again. And I said, okay, well, we need something for people to keep showing up. So how easy would it be for you to put together an album? And he said, oh yeah, I can do that. I got totally out of my wheelhouse, but you look after that, I'll host the meetings. So that's what we did. And we made album 22. And it, it launched July 22nd of 2021. And we have 22 songs on it because it reflects the uh, emotional high rise of awareness, which is a theory from my book, which I brought copies of if anyone's interested, um, but fully committed the sacred sojourn of now is the book that took me five years to write in a month last year because I had to go through everything that I did in order to write it, including getting locked up under the Mental Health Act for two and a half weeks in, 2020, in 2019 that helped me see that if I didn't know my rights, I didn't have the rights I thought that I did, and I also wasn't allowed to speak to a lawyer while I was in there without approval by a psychiatrist, mm. which was crazy. Scary. Yes. 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 Very scary. Yeah. Well, I got a question. Yeah. Who was it that changed all the wording to their advantage? Is it like just done over time? Or was there a group of people that decided we're going to change the language so it's to our advantage and not to theirs, meaning those? Well, if we look at the compartmentalizing of anything, if I'm the asshole, pardon my language, I don't know what the mouth is doing, right? If I'm the heart, I don't know what my feet are doing specifically. This is why we've done it to ourselves over time. And it's been so gradual that only the very top have any idea what's actually going on at the layers below but the layers below are just going to focus on their compartment and what needs to happen to keep their boat floating and to make sure that the Excel sheet balances. So we did it to ourselves. It's been many people, it's been many hands because these hands are the ones that take up pens that actually change things <coughs> from my perspective. So going back to the frequency shift and how Luna helped me see that I was selling fear in a different package, 
we then worked on album 22 plus after the first album came together and we got another 22 songs and that one had less of a community feel because fewer people needed the community because more things were open and the music industry was no longer shut down but I've been trying to get album 23 going and it wasn't until today and yesterday that it was like oh, okay yes now it's time so basically artists are going to have an opportunity to get mentorship without having to pay as much as all of us have paid to know what we do because if we come together in common unity then we actually get to share the goods that are within that community so album 23 is an opportunity to actually change the frequency of the artists putting out the music to in, to expand what music we have access to that's imbued with good tunes and vibes and lyrics and messages to be able to up level and ride at a higher level and be supported in the process too. So I wanted to share that with you and say too, there will be more information coming because it is new in the resharing of it, but it's also to say that just because I'm the one speaking this now doesn't mean that I'm the one that has all of the answers, nor do I want to. Because I think we all do have tremendous value in this room and beyond it, because the law of 250 says every single one of us are connected to 250 people at least as a minimum, some more, some less, but generally speaking, our sphere of influence is about 250, which is a lot bigger than what most of us might think of based on our daily connections. But when we get back to the power of information, we see that it was never about the data and the dots we thought needed to be connected because we forgot that we are those dots. We're the ones that get into formation. And not because someone told us to, but because it was what we knew we needed to do. And then when we do it, we look back and say, holy shit, I'm so grateful I stuck around for this ride. Because <laughs> it's been crazy. <laughs> it's been crazy for us all in different ways. And if you've been locked up under the Mental Health Act too, I'm sorry for you. You probably didn't need to be there, and if you did, it might have been a moment when you let your emotions take over and decide or choose from a less rational place. Ration of lies, rational lies. Which eyes are we using? These are the things that if we stop allowing stigmas to label us and compartmentalize us and force us into contracted states, then we can actually be expanded the way that we were meant to be as energy in physical form. So I hope this is a useful reminder to each of you. Thank you for allowing me to share this message today. And then thank you for what you do with it because that's how words actually have meaning. It's not what was said, it's what we do with what was said. So thank you. Thank you.